Hi everyone, thanks for checking out this video. Um, so this is going to be the first video in a series of videos I'm going to make about the topic of parameter estimation. So in the past, I've been telling you guys about a bunch of different models in computational biology. So I've told you guys about like models of gene expression and like gene expression networks and um, the predator-prey model, the logistic growth model, things like that. And at some point, um, once you have like a basic understanding of these models, um, eventually you want to start thinking about like the actual usefulness of the model and like how to fit it to data and how to use it to like make predictions and stuff. Um, and that's when you get to the point of uh, needing to estimate parameters for the model. And this is um, a pretty fun and, and uh, useful topic. So I thought I'd just make a couple of videos about this. So for this next slide, I just said like, how can models be useful? And there's really um, three things that I was thinking about. So the first thing is explaining data, um, like experimental data you have, you wanna be able to like use your model to explain it. Uh, the second thing is making predictions. So if you have a model um, and you wanna to try to validate it, the way to validate a model is to try to make some predictions about an experiment you haven't done yet, and then test it out and like see how your predictions from, from the model actually do. And then um, the third and probably most important thing is using the model to actually gain insights um, about the biology, or if you're in a different field, just about whatever field, um, whatever field you're modeling. You want to be able to actually like learn something and gain um, gain new knowledge about whatever system you're modeling. Um, so yeah, all of these things are are sort of uh, the kind of the first step for this is going to be um explaining the data and that's where um parameter estimation is going to come in so i put for an example this this gene expression model that I've talked about in some other videos before so here we have some gene x and then um this is like a, a model of uh of the, depending on what you're studying it could be the um rna being transcribed from from the gene or it could be the uh, production of the protein and there's some like production term k and some degradation term uh, gamma. And I've made some videos on this before, um, like simulating it and stuff. And at some point it's like, for this to be useful, we need to start like actually looking at data and estimating these two parameters, K and gamma. So for a simple example, I think a good way to like, start to like gain intuition on, um, on the challenge of parameter estimation is just with a simple example of linear regression. So I just said, like, for an example, let's say we have this kind of um, linear linear looking um, data that we've collected. So we have some variable X and some variable Y, and we've just collected some of this data um, that looks like it could possibly be modeled um, with just a linear model. Um, and so we say, like, how do we explain this data? Can we possibly fit a line to this data in a way that will be useful for us to like to like explain it and also to make predictions um, for what 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 the y's would look like for for new values we collect based on some x. So then we can think about like what kind of lines could we use to start explaining this? Like should we use this line? And I just put the equation to like throwback to like um, eighth grade, I guess, y equals mx plus b. So we have our x and y of course, and then we have m and b are the parameters. And the idea here is that for, for different parameters, for different values for M and B, we can draw different lines and try to see which one can do the best job of explaining um, these data points. So would we want a line like this? Well, probably not because it's not really capturing, um, it's not really capturing the trend. Um, what about like this? Well, also no, because it's not really, it's not really capturing the trend of the data. Um, but what about like this? Well, this one, possibly yes, because this one actually does look like it's um, fitting the data reasonably well. Um, so whatever whatever values of M and B we chose to draw this line, we might want to save those values as being like possible, like possibly um, kind of the, the true values of the underlying system. You know what I mean? But from those, from those uh, lines I just showed you guys, what I really just wanted to show you was that like some lines fit the data better than others. Um, so like this one doesn't fit the data that well and this one fits the data better. Um, and we can see that visually, but how do we go about actually quantifying this um, so that we can really, uh, we can really explore like which ones fit the line better in like a quantitative sense rather than just, um, just looking with our eyes and estimating. 
So the way we're going to do this, the way we're going to like quantify the um, goodness of fit of the line to the data is going to be by measuring what's called residuals. So the residuals are just the difference between um, our prediction, like our line prediction of the system and the actual data points. So for example, for some whatever value of x this is, we can look and see what was the prediction of our model, which is this, this uh, the value of this line here. So that's the prediction of our model. And then we, we say, okay, well, what was the actual, um, the real value of y for that x in the data? And this is the real y uh, for that x in the data. And the difference between them, the difference between our prediction and the real y value for that x is what's called the residual. And just a note on the vocabulary here, um, some people also call this the error. So like you may hear about like um, error minimization in this context. And so if you're like a serious like statistics person, it's in statistics, it, it's technically called a residual and it's technically like not correct to call it error. And I guess if you're writing like some kind of like formal statistics paper or something, you might want to keep that in mind. But sort of um, in like, uh, you know, like colloquially speaking, um, people do call it error too. Um, so you, you might hear this called like residual or error, and it basically just means the same thing. Basically just means the difference between the um, model prediction and the actual value in the data. Um, and so yeah, we could just we could just go through and look at all these residuals um, for each of the data points, basically just looking at each data point and seeing um, for that value of X, what was the prediction of our model and what was the prediction of, sorry, uh, what was the prediction of the model and then what was the actual Y value in the data? And then we can think about like quantifying, um, quantifying like the total inaccuracy of our model just by basically by like squaring all these residuals because some of them are negative and we want all of them to be the same sign. So we just like square all of them so that the negative ones also become positive. Just square them and then add them up. And then that would just be like, a quantification of the total um, inaccuracy of our model for some given parameter set. So that's what's called the um, least like least uh, least squared um, method, because you're just uh, you're just squaring all the residuals, adding them up, and then that's like your total inaccuracy. So that's what you want to try to like minimize, and you want to find the uh, parameter set that will minimize that. So uh, yeah, just you can look at the residuals for like different. Um, for different possible lines, which we draw with like different assumptions about M and B. And then you can notice that some of them, um, some of them have smaller residuals. Like this one, the one that we said was kind of a good fit. This has smaller residuals than the, than the ones that are kind of a bad fit. Yeah, like I said, like this could be quantified just by like squaring all the residuals and then adding them up. And that would give you like a total score of the inaccuracy of the model for some parameter set that you would then want to uh, minimize. And so just to yeah, review some terminology, um, so like I said, like the residual also sometimes called the error, even though that's like technically not correct, people still call that. Um, so you might hear either one. Uh, that's just the difference between our model um, and the actual data. So for some, for, for some given X, just seeing like what our model predicts would be Y for that X, and then what was actually Y in the data for that X. These are the um, residuals. And then, um, so a loss function is like I was saying, it's like the, the total, it's a measurement of the total inaccuracy um, of the model. So um, the, the, least, the least squares method is an example of a commonly, commonly used um, loss function. And that's what I was saying, how you would just like to measure the, the total inaccuracy, you would just um, square all the residuals and add them up. And then that would be like a, a measurement of the uh, level of inaccuracy of the model for some uh, particular parameter set. Um, so then the goal, the goal here, because like using this equation, um, y equals mx plus b, there is uh, there's really an infinite number of combinations of m and b you could use. Um, so the goal is to like search through some parameter space of like parameters you think might be feasible. You want to search through all the possible um, parameter sets and try to minimize that loss function you came up with. So we have this loss function that's like the sum of the squares of the residuals. We'd want to just try out a bunch of different um, sets of M and B and try to just like search through this parameter space 
and try to see which um, values of M and B uh, minimize this loss function um, so that we're minimizing the inaccuracy. And um, yeah, that's basically the idea. Um, also, another thing with like with parameter estimation, you don't want to overfit. So this is a, this is an example of like what it would look like to overfit this data. And the problem with overfitting is that it's like so this wouldn't work with with the MX plus B um, linear regression model because that only has um, two parameters. But if you had a complicated enough model, you could have it fit exactly like any kind of data set you. Um, you gave it, but then the problem would be that it would be fitting to the noise rather than fitting to the underlying signal, and you'd be um, you'd be overfitting in a way that wouldn't wouldn't really be capturing the trend. It would just be like, yeah, it's just uh, overfitting. You know what I mean? So this is like um, Occam's razor: the idea that if you have two hypotheses that can explain the uh, data equally well, you'd want to go with the with the hypothesis that has fewer assumptions. You don't want to be making like more assumptions and using more parameters than you have to. So, um, yeah, it's like simplicity is kind of a goal with this. You don't want to be overfitting because then it'll just be fitting to the noise uh, rather than fitting to the uh, underlying trend. Um, and yeah, I'll just say like, I've been talking about like linear regression for this example, but this also like these same concepts of just trying to minimize um, a loss function to try to choose like search for a parameter space in order to find a parameter set that, min that minimizes a loss function, which again just means like minimizing the uh, inaccuracy of the model for some parameter set. Um, it's the same basic idea for like more complicated systems too. Like you might have like nonlinear regression, like maybe logistic regression, for example, or you might have like a system of ODEs, like kind of some of the other models I've been talking about in my other videos, or even, um, even deep learning with um, neural networks basically is is based on the same kind of um, idea of minimizing a loss function. And with neural networks, it's it's like crazy because it could have like thousands of parameters. And when you get to that point, you're searching through like a, a really large um, parameter space. And then it becomes like quite difficult to do that um, numerical optimization to like properly search through that uh, parameter space to minimize uh, minimize loss function. But yeah, even though these things are like more complicated than the linear regression model, they're all based on the same kind of underlying principles. And that's why I think it's good to like build intuition on the uh, linear regression model, just so that you can kind of like understand what's going on. And then you can also get a better understanding of how these like more complex um, uh, models, how they work too. Um, so yeah, that's all I have for you guys uh, for this video. I think in the next video, I'm gonna be actually like doing an example in Python and showing you guys how to um, how to do like the linear um, linear fit to data um, from scratch in Python. I think that's a good way to like kind of try it for yourself and start um, like building more intuition about it. Uh, but yeah, like usual, if you guys have any questions, just let me know in the comments. And um, yeah, uh, thanks for watching. See you next time.